Hi, it's Miss Adrian with Herrick District Library, and I'm back with another preschool story time. I will have some help from my little lamb friend to sing an old favorite, Mary Had a Little Lamb. And I'll teach you a little sign language as well. We will sing a song about elephants. This is a very, very fun song that can get a little bit loud, but it's okay to be loud sometimes, right? And you get to help me tell a story. Part of our summer reading program is discovering new stories, new books, and you get to help me by being the illustrations or the pictures for the book. So we'll get some good moving in in that way and I'm excited to teach you how to do that. So to get started, I like to begin with a hello song. This also has some sign language in it. We will say, hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time, point at your watch, to say hello. And it's okay if you don't have a watch. Just point at your wrist. Here we go. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. And now, Mary Had a Little Lamb is actually a featured song on our early literacy calendar. You can find those at the North Branch where I work in the children's area or you can find them at the main library in the children's area upstairs by Swimmy the Turtle. So you can pick those up and this song is a classic. Uh, it's a good one to learn and to sing over and over again and I'll teach you a little sign language to go with it. So this is a lamb they have kind of like a, a hair type of fur. We call it fleece. That's what they call it in the song. And what happens with this fleece is it gets cut like we cut our hair. So it gets trimmed once in a while. We call that shearing. And the sign language for sheep actually references that. So I'll show you how to say sheep in sign language. You pretend you're holding a sheep, then you make your hands into scissors. So I'm like holding up the one, two, three, and you can move your fingers like this. It's a little tricky to move your fingers sometimes, especially when you have your thumb out like this, but it's good to practice and it's good for our coordination. All right, you ready? So this is how you say sheep in sign language. So you're holding that little pretend sheep and you shear off some of its wool. There you go. Now, as we sing the song, every time I sing the words lamb, little lamb, you can sign sheep. So listen for that and be ready to sign it, okay? Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. Everywhere that Mary went, Mary went, Mary went. Everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. There was only one lamb in that verse, wasn't there? I wonder if there will be an in the next verse. It followed her to school one day, school one day, school one day. It followed her to school one day, which was against the rules. There was no lamb in that one. Hmm, they just said it. Well, let's try it with the last verse. This is the last one. Have your arm ready. There's gotta be one in here, right? Okay, 
<laughs> it made the children laugh and play, laugh and play, laugh and play. It made the children laugh and play to see a lamb at school. There, we got one more in there. All right, so that was Mary Had a Little Lamb, a classic. And now a little twist on another song. This one about elephants is about elephants going out to play. There's a version of this song where they go out to play on a spider web. And I have a version of it that involves marching up a hill. Kind of reminds me of the ants go marching, that song. But in this version, we will be counting up. One, two, three, four, five. We'll count up to five and we'll have five little elephant friends playing. So here's how it goes. Each time I say elephant, let's do more sign language. The sign for elephant is very, very recognizable. I think you'll know it means elephant. You see that? So you start at your nose and you pretend you have a elephant's nose and you trace it like their whole trunk. There it is. So there's our elephant in sign language. So the song, every time we hear elephant, we'll do that sign. And here's how it goes. One elephant went out to play, marching up a hill one day. They had such enormous fun that they called for another elephant to come. This is the part that gets a little loud sometimes. You have to yell for the next elephant. Hey, elephant! Now how many are there? One, two elephants went out to play, marching up a hill one day. They had such enormous fun that they called for another elephant to come. Here we go. Hey, elephant! Three elephants went out to play, marching up a hill one day. They had such enormous fun that they called for another elephant to come. Hey, elephant! One, two, three, four elephants went out to play, marching up a hill one day. They had such enormous fun that they called for another elephant to come. <gasps> hey, elephant! All right, this is all, all of them. One, two, three, four. Five elephants went out to play, marching up a hill one day. They had such enormous fun. Ooh. But then they got tired and they rolled right down. <laughs> Now you can make your own little twist on that song. I like that one because it involves that movement and you can add some Spanish into it. If you know how to count in Spanish, you can say those numbers instead and I'll teach you a little trick with that. There's something special about counting in Spanish. Um, when you count, there's one, two, three, four, five. So in Spanish, Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. So there's our numbers. And uno, this is a special one. When we say one elephant, instead of saying uno elefante, we say un elefante. 
So when we're just counting normally, one, two, three, four, five, you would say uno. But if you're counting things or elephants, you say un elefante. And the Spanish for elephant, did you hear it? It sounds a lot like elephant, but instead it is elefante, elefante. There it is. So let's try counting and singing that song with un elefante went out to play. So that's one fun thing you can do when you're trying to learn a new language. If you change just a word here and a word there and you kind of start adding it in, it is a little bit easier to learn instead of learning a huge Spanish song all at once. So if you want to get started, that's a good way. Ready? So we'll say, un elefante went out to play. And when we call for, hey, elephant, we can say, hey, elefante. Here we go. Un elefante went out to play, marching up a hill one day. They had such enormous fun that they called for another elephant to come. Hey, elefante. Uno. Dos elefantes went out to play, marching up a hill one day. They had such enormous fun that they called for another elephant to come. Hey, elefante. Uno. Dos. Tres elefantes went out to play, marching up a hill one day. They had such enormous fun that they called for another elephant to come. Hey, elefante! Uno, dos, tres. Cuatro elefantes went out to play, marching up a hill one day. They had such enormous fun that they called for another elephant to come. Last one. Hey, elefante. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Cinco elefantes went out to play, marching up a hill one day. They had such enormous fun. <sighs> but then they got tired and they rolled back down. <laughs> well, those tired elephantes can have a little nap because we are going to tell a story together. This is based on Denise Fleming's book, In the Tall, Tall Grass. And we're, I've chosen a few animals throughout that we are going to pretend to be. So first, of course, we need to be the tall, tall grass. So I like to sit on my knees, but you can sit on your bum if you prefer. And we're going to be tall, tall grass. Reach way up high. And then can you sway? In the tall, tall grass. Now imagine all the animals that might be hiding in tall, tall grass. I wonder what we might see. Hmm. Munch. Munch, caterpillar's lunch. Munch, munch, caterpillar's lunch. Here's how we can be a caterpillar. If you lay on your belly and then lift your torso up and then wiggle like you're a caterpillar. Munch, munch, caterpillar lunch. Then we have another animal. How about a hummingbird? Dart, dip, hummingbird, sip. So for this one, 
my arms are out all the way straight. I'm not bending them. And I'm spinning them in tiny little circles. Dart, dip, hummingbird, sip. Dart, dip, hummingbird, sip. That one's kind of hard. I can feel that in my arms. Feels good. How about another flying animal? Mm. For this one, we're going to give ourselves wings like this. So bring your arms up and touch your shoulders. And then you can flap your wings. This one is strum, drum, bees hum. Strum, drum, bees hum. There we go. Now the next animal, you will definitely find this in some tall, tall grass in some places. This is slip, slide, snakes, glide. And this one's kind of similar to our caterpillar, but there's a little difference. So when we get down on our bellies, instead of pushing ourselves up with our arms, we just go up on our, on our elbows right here, just like this. And you, you can slip and slide snakes glide. Slip, slide, snakes glide. There's our snake. So what else might be in the tall? tall grass. Okay, I saved the best one for the last here. So this is our last animal. This one, we have to do some pretending here. The rhyme is hip hop ears flop. What could that be? Hip hop ears flop. It is a bunny rabbit. It's true. So to be a bunny rabbit and to do our hip hop ears flop, our arms are going to be our ears and we're going to put our foreheads all the way down on the ground in front of us. So I'll show you what it looks like and I think you'll be able to tell that this is a rabbit based on the ears. Okay, here's how it goes. Put my arms behind me and then my head down Hip, hop, ears, flop. Do you see my bunny ears? <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> so we've done our hip, hop, ears, flop. Now we're going to wrap up the story and we get to be moons. So to be a moon, put your arms above your head. And sometimes a moon looks like a crescent. So can you make your body look like a crescent? And this rhyme is stars bright, moon light. Can you be a moon going the other way? <gasps> there we go. Stars bright, moon light. And then we will say good night to our tall, tall grass. So let's be tall, tall grass again. Tall, tall grass. Good night, tall, tall grass. That is a book you can check out and read for yourself. Uh, there are a few more animals in the actual book. Uh, I just picked out the ones that I thought were the most fun to put motion to. So I'm going to wrap us up with a goodbye song. It is very, very similar to our hello song. Instead of saying hello, friends, we are going to say goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. All right, here we go. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. 
Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Thanks for joining us for another preschool story time. I'll see you next time.